Welcome to Optic Straight Debates. I'm Andras. My name is Theodor. Hello. Today we're basically elaborating on categories that you can find on our uh, webpage. And we're also um, talking about in individual characteristics that define certain products so that we can categorize them into the individual categories on our web store. And uh, today, we're, now we're going to be talking about the features of low light uh, rifle scopes. We also, of course, um, receive questions, several questions uh, on our email on this mm -hmm. topic. But this is mostly going to be a general discussion on the topic. And uh, so low light rifle scopes, what uh, are the individual characteristics that define low light rifle scopes? Well, we list products into this category if they are if they feature at least the following setup. So 50 or 56 millimeter objective lens. This is definitely one feature because the bigger the objective lens, the better will be the life and the light gathering capabilities. High quality of optics. This is our, we categorize optics based on our experience, which are suitable for low light uh, based on their quality and which are not. Because you have scopes with a 56, 56 millimeter objective lens, but the quality is not high enough that we would consider them suitable for low light use. Um, <clears throat> and the third common feature is that they have illuminated reticle. So objective size, quality illuminated reticle. There are a couple of additional, I would say, parameters that are, are real, a little bit more complicated. And those are the scopes which are specifically made for low light, like uh, Schmidt & Mendel Polar, the Zeiss Victory HT, and similar scopes, which usually feature four times zoom and uh, shot HD high transmission uh, glass for the lenses. Those are definitely in this category because they're made specifically for, for low light use. We can also elaborate a little bit more uh, on this topic in, in the following about the tube size diameter and about the zoom factor. And then the second, uh, I would say, group of, of uh, rifle scopes that come also into this category are fixed power 8x56 because these are this used to be the true low light scopes of the past. So because their zoom factor is one, because they don't have yeah, a yeah. zoom factor because they're fixed power, uh, they usually were the brightest because they had a small number of lenses inside. So eight by 56 scopes are also in this category. Nowadays, they're not really made by many manufacturers anymore, right? No. So you see this is the Doctor. Yeah, Noblex. Now they're now Noblex. Noblex. In yeah, 2018, they changed the name. Uh, yeah, they're still producing 8x56. Carl Cops is producing 8x56. Meopta is producing 7x56, I think, still. Schmidt & Bender is classic, producing yeah. the classic series and the Hungaria series, 8x56, and basically no one else, at least not in Europe. But these were the scopes which were in the past the brightest and were considered as the, the scopes which you buy for low light use because, uh, because they are, it's really simple, because they are fixed power, they are not variable, they have small number of lenses inside and the, the lower the number of lenses the higher light transmission rate because there will be less light lost uh, through all the lenses and with eight uh, 8 time magnification and 56 mm objective lens, they feature 7 mm exit pupil, which is optimal for low light use because the eye pupil can dilate up, to, up seven, to 7, yeah. not more. Uh, and even if, if your eye pupil is not able to dilate to 7 anymore, only to let's say 5 or something like that, if you're a little bit older, they're still the most comfortable to use because they have really good eye box and, and big uh, exit pupil. So these were, these were the low light rifle scopes of the past. Then we have like the Polar and the uh, uh, Zeiss Victory HD, the scopes which are made with a specific glass, with specific coatings, which have a specific uh, uh, reticle illumination and usually four times zoom. So this is four to 16, three to 12, 2.5 to 10. Those models are really low light use specialists. These are scopes really specially specifically made for low light use, so the Polar series and the Victory HD series. 
And then we have high quality scopes like this Leica or this Zeiss and Swarovski and Doctor, which feature bigger zoom, usually six times zoom or even eight times zoom. But they still, even though they have really high number of lenses inside, so that they are able to produce eight times zoom and really huge uh, magnification range. Like this one, it goes all the way from 2.4 to 16. So a really big uh, six times zoom and the Swarovski and size they also offer eight times zoom. Still the quality is so high that even though they have really big number of lenses inside, they still achieve more than 90 or even 92% of light transmission rate. So everything here on the table has to be above 90% of light transmission rate. To fit in the category. Yeah, and not some manufacturers, especially some American and Japanese manufacturers and so on, the newcomers on the market, which are not in the in the premium class and they are not the market leaders, they also write sometimes that they have 95, 96 percent of light transmission rate. But usually, this is more marketing than something else. They sometimes write only light transmission rate of one lens or one set of lenses only, let's say, for the objective part and so on. So, if you wish to have a really high quality, high with a high light transmission rate, the rifle scope of this kind, it usually has more than 90% of light transmission rate, the best even about 95, and they're usually made in Europe, and they're really expensive from the premium class. But if a scope has already above 90% of light transmission rate, and if, if it features a 56 millimeter objective lens, and meant for hunting, not some scope with a really high magnification, then we list it into this, into this category of uh, low light rifle scopes. I've also noticed um, that with some uh, newly made, so I'd say recent uh, mm -hmm. premium uh, low light scopes, that the tube is a little bit thicker. Which made them better, not with others. Um, I would say if we look at usually 8x56 uh, rifle scopes in the past, they had one inch tube and they were the brightest. I personally believe that the tube diameter doesn't really affect, affect the, the light yeah. transmission rate. It is probably easier to produce a scope with a high light transmission rate if you have more space. So that uh, you can insert a little bit bigger lenses and so on. It's a little bit easier to do all the mechanics and so on. But still, the bigger the diameter doesn't, doesn't affect, affect the light transmission rate. So it's not like, okay, I will buy a scope with a 40 millimeter objective, uh, 40 millimeter mm -hmm. central tube diameter and it will be the brightest. No, it doesn't work that way. The quality is the key. And the most important factor also with low light uh, rifle scopes uh, is that the reticle illumination is done appropriately. So that it's really, really fine and you can fine tune it in low light situations so that it doesn't um, affect your performance too much. Because if, if the reticle illumination is too strong, then you will see the reticle illuminated, but you will not see anything behind it. So usually in this category, these are all hunting scopes, they usually have only a center point of the reticle illuminated, yeah. and they offer the possibility to, to the user to really fine tune it and to really extremely low intensity levels so that you get uh, best possible performance in low light. Uh, one more thing, so um, um, yeah, you, you already mentioned that the, the, the dot is finely tuned so that it is yeah. uh, adapted to the twilight. Yeah, that's mostly it. So um, I wanted to ask you if in this category of low light uh, rival scopes, if we only find hunting rival scopes or any other types of we, we consider, uh, we list only hunting rival scopes in this category. Because uh, even though some tactical scopes are also used in low light, target scopes, they are not used. Mm -hmm. But even though, uh, we consider this is the category which is specifically meant for hunters. Even if you take, I don't know, the PM2 5 to 25 by 56, it can be used in low light, but uh, it's not primarily meant for, for low light hunting use. All these scopes are. So what is also common to most of these scopes is that their magnification range is on the lower side. So they usually start around 3, 2.5 or something like that uh, at the minimal magnification. And they are, most of them is quite big and heavy because normally the 56 millimeter objective lens 
gives you a big scope and and polar and has a thicker tube so yeah so it, it's yeah. long and so on but you really get optimal performance in those last minutes of light for hunting it is also true that my personal opinion is that in the future somewhere along the way these scopes will disappear from the market let's say 10 15 years onwards around 2030 let's say something like that because my personal belief is that night vision optics will uh, take their place yeah you will not need to have a really big and heavy scope you will be able to see equally well with with night vision optics which is at the moment still not quite the case because optical performance of these devices in day uh, in broad daylight is still far superior than any night vision optics can do in in, in, in daylight so now you always need to have a combination but somewhere in the future i think the digital night vision optics will uh, progress to a level that it will be able to replace digital night like vision uh, clip-ons are getting more more affordable right but, but you still, still need, but you're still a, scope, need yeah. a scope to mount it on so yeah, yeah. I yeah, think basically, yeah, so uh, I, we mentioned all the characteristics that define. Uh, did we mention that coatings also define? So coatings high quality. Are... With high quality, the coatings come. What is also what you can still find in this category is that some of these hunting rifleskopes have uh, thick reticles, mm -hmm. so that even without illumination turned on, you're able to see the reticle immediately because it's really thick. This is one feature like this, and some of these scopes, at least Schmidt and Bender models they still feature first focal plane reticle which is highly uncommon in hunting scopes but in low light when you put it let's say on if you have a 56 millimeter objective lens the optimal setting is eight time magnification if you set it to eight the reticle because becomes thick and you can you're use able it to see it in a twilight right? yeah because if you have a really thin reticle like leica or uh, swarovski or Kales then without the illumination in low light it's impossible to shoot because you're not able to see those really thin lines in, in low light uh, if, the, if the reticle is a little bit thicker then you're able to pick it up and to see it even in, even if the illumination is not turned on but normally when the when the light goes down and down and down then you have to turn the illumination on them as well not on those with really thin reticles I think we basically covered the, okay. the description of low light uh, rifle scopes as a category on our web store. Hit like, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoyed the video. If we forgot something, leave a comment in the comment section down below or send us an email and we'll reply to it. Thank you once again for watching and see you in the next debates. Thank you. Bye.